Hey guys and gals, welcome back to Bowser One, and I'm back today with another Bowser One Extra video. Um, it's a tier list video, and I love the last two tier list videos I made, so I'm very excited about this one. You read the title, I'm sure you know what the fuck it's about. It's um, a video game movie in TV tier list, and also a Zelda game tier list. So I'm going to try to get two of them done, like I did in the last tier list video. I think that should be fine, because uh, I haven't really seen a lot of the you know, the video game movies and TV shows they're listing here. Uh, the Mario movie also isn't one of these pictures, but I'm still going to rank it. After all of these have been ranked, I'm going to, you know, tell which which tier I think the Mario movie should be on. Because I have seen it. I have seen it. And before I start um, the tier, like, putting stuff on tiers, I am going to shout out the creator of the tier list. So for the movies and TV show ones... It is a creator named Camden Com. I think that's how you say it. Uh, so check out the Twitter of the creator right there. So that's for the movies and TV show tier list. And I'll go over to the Zelda tier list and shout out the creator of that one. The creator of that one is... Is it... Oh, it just says tier maker. Is it the official tier, mark, tier maker or... I don't know. Uh, just check out the Twitter. Maybe you could find out if it's actual official tier maker or not. Okay. We're going to start off with movie, TV show tier list. I already have made the categories. So start off, looks like this one. Uh, what is it? Fatal Fighter. I think that's based on the game that Terry was in from Smash. Um, looks like The Rock's in it. Have not seen it. Uh, next one is the OG Mario movie. I think, I think, just going to throw this in okay. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's weird as hell, though. It is absolutely weird as hell. Uh, but I, I, I do like it. I have it on DVD. It's not a bad watch. Probably should have watched it before the um, new Mario movie, but it's not bad. If you're a Mario fan, you might get some enjoyment out of it. You know, laughing at uh, what the fuck they did to to Bowser and, and the Goombas. Uh, but it, it's, it's not bad. It's not bad. I do like this the plot of this one more than the new one. I'll say that. Uh, this is just classic Mario, you know, Mario and Luigi saving Peach. You know, I like that plot. Uh, next, oh shit, did I, okay. I moved the camera, but it's okay. Next one is Donkey Kong Country. I have not seen, I've seen clips of it. And it looks good. It looks like, you know, similar to the Super Show, but I have not seen it. Uh, Zelda TV show, have not seen that too. I have seen the clips at like, because at the end of the Super Show, they would show clips for the Zelda show. And I have not seen it, but uh, that's obviously where the... You know, excuse me, princess, where that one came from. Next one looks like an Animal Crossing one, which um I didn't know existed until I googled this tier list, and now I'm very eager to watch it. It looks like an anime, um, but I don't care. I want to see it. Um, I, pr I hope it's not just in Japanese because I don't speak Japanese. Uh, have not seen, but really much want to. Next one is Sonic the Hedgehog. Um, I have seen this one. I'm gonna stick it in. I gotta think it, because I've seen like all of these Sonic ones. I gotta think which one's my favorite. Probably this one. Stick that one's probably my favorite. I'm gonna stick it in okay, because I, I grew I grew up watching the Super Show and like all the OG Sonic cartoons. That one's probably my favorite because I think that one's got like the two stupid robots. You know, one of them's like a chicken, the other one looks like um that fucking guy from Star Wars. I don't know his name because I don't watch Star Wars. But it's funny because we're like idiots. And, well, then again, Robotnik's also, like, an idiot. And this is also the one where, uh, after all the episodes, it's, like, Sonic says. And then one of the one where he's, like, you know, you don't trust your strangers. Because, you know, most of them could be pedophiles. Or, or something like that. And that's no good. Okay. Um, we we got our first legendary thing coming up. Um, which is Kirby right back at you. It is amazing. If you're a Kirby fan, you need to see it. I think they're releasing a Blu-ray box set. I, I've been hearing about that. I think I first heard about that in December. I think it might be released already in Japan. I don't know if, um, you know, people in, like, U.S. and Canada and all that are getting a box set. I like one. I do have um, the Kirby 20th, is it 20th anniversary collection, which has three episodes. And I also do have a, um, a DVD... Um, of, um, one, I can't find it right now, I thought it was close by, but it's not, but anyway, I really like this, um, this TV show has, like, 
stated like, okay, this is what DDD and Meta Knight need to sound like. You know, this is what I base my DDD impression off of. DDD's perfect. He's perfect in the show. He's how I would imagine him. He's like jealous over Kirby. And he's like the best part of the show. It's like, it's so well done. How it's like a monster of the week type show. How Kirby's dealing with a new monster. And they have that enemy overwhelming plot. Meta Knight is so kick-ass, just like in the games. It is perfect. It is awesome. I love it. Kirby fan, watch it. It's amazing. Okay, the next one is um, the Super Show. I'm going to throw this in great. Uh, despite most people not liking it, I, I enjoyed the Super Show, probably because I, I grew up with it. Um, I still think it's a good show. Um. Mario and Luigi are absolutely fantastic. I love how Mario's so obsessed with, like, pastas and stuff. King Koopa's also great. Very funny. Um, I, I love how most of the episodes are, like, parodies to older movies and stuff. And I love the live-action parts. The live-action parts are also really great and fun. If you're a Mario fan, you'll, you'll definitely enjoy this. You know, I, I know there's a lot of, like, memes and jokes about it. But I honestly, I really enjoy it still. I think it's good. It's got a lot of fun. Definitely worth a watch. Now, I have no idea what this next one is. It, I kind of think it's Ghostbusters, but, like, Ghostbusters was always a movie before it was a game, right? I don't know. I just think it's Ghostbusters because it looks like that guy's got, like, a beam shooting out of something. You know, like, I think it's, like, a ghost beam, but I don't know what that is. Okay, the next one is, I think that's Sonic the Hedgehog. I think that's the more darker of the cartoons. Um, where, like, Robotnik takes characters and, like, actually fucking turns them into robots. And it's like an apocalypse. It's good. I, I've seen probably less of it than um, the other Sonic the Hedgehog. Um, but it was good. Um, I think that introduced Sally. Um, I don't know much about Sonic nowadays, but as a kid, I you know, I played, like, all the games. Uh, but it, it was good. It was enjoyable. It was a darker, which is a little bit rare at the time, because most of the TV shows uh, at that time were, like, all lighthearted. So that was definitely a rare thing. The next one is the Angry Birds movie, which I haven't seen it since it released. Oh, fuck. I, I'm going to put it in an okay, because I'm trying to base it off of what I remember. And I remember it being, I remember it being good. Um... I think there was a sequel. I haven't seen the sequel, if that's the case. Um, I like what they did with Mighty Eagle and kind of turned him into, like, a fat, lazy piece of shit. You know, he's supposed to be, like, this legendary Mighty Bird, and he's like, no, he's just a fucking loser. Um, but I, I remember, like, the voice acting was okay. It had some funny moments, especially around uh, Chuck, the yellow bird. Um, I should watch it again soon. I don't I don't know where I can find it. Um, next up is Sonic Underground, which is also a bit of um a darker Sonic cartoon. Um, and also had, like, Sonic had siblings. I think they were his siblings. The the pink-haired girl and the green-haired guy. Um, I don't know. It had a lot more to do with music, which is weird, because, you know, if you played a Sonic game, you know that Sonic never really fucking played music or anything like that. Um, but it was okay. I probably watched that show the least. Um, next up is another Sonic show, which is Sonic X, which I gotta say, it's probably... I, I've seen, like, maybe one episode or so of it, um, but it looks good. Um, I think the voice acting is the best out of any Sonic cartoon, um, including... Uh, did they use the game voice actors or not? I don't know, but th that just shows how good the voice acting is. And I, the action is really good, too. Probably the best Sonic cartoon, but I do prefer the OG because that's the one I grew up with. Uh, next up is Detective Pikachu. Have not seen. Um, I, I don't, I've heard mixed of reviews about it. I'm not too eager to watch it, but, um, yeah. Next up, I think it's the last, oh no, not the last Sonic thing. Sonic Boom, once again. Okay, I actually have seen this one a lot. And it's probably the most funny Sonic cartoon. Like, there's got a lot of, like, inside jokes. Um, like, I did sit down and watch it just because I heard it was really good. There's, like, one where, like, Sonic gets kidnapped by, like, a super, super fan, and he's got, like, a, like, Sonic OCs and shit. I'm like, this game is, it's, like, really breaking the fourth wall. I mean, this show is really breaking the fourth wall and shit. And, and it was really good. Um, 
I think they did use the voice actors from the games for this one. Voice acting's really good. I like Eggman in this. He's fucking great. Um, there isn't much action, but the action in it was good. So, yeah. Next up is Pokemon. And I'm gonna put Pokemon in, in good. I haven't watched the anime, Pokemon anime, since maybe X and Y. Um... It was good, though, you know, every time I'd get home from school in elementary school, they'd have Pokemon playing. Uh, so I sit down and I watch an episode, and it was, it was really good. Um, it's, it's a shame Ash is no longer in the show, but whatever. I did watch, like, the complete Indigo League, and that one was really good. Um, you know, it just, like, it gives you a lot of emotions, and, you know, you got a lot of epic Pokemon battles and stuff. So it's overall, it's a good show. You know, um, like, the whole complete anime. Uh, next up is, I think it's the OG Mortal Kombat movie. I haven't seen the OG one. I have seen the the new one, though. And if I were to rank the new one, it would probably go in good. Um, I have never played a Mortal Kombat game, but the movie was really good. It did have, like, um, good action, and I did enjoy it, so. Next up is another legendary, and that is Castlevania. One of my favorite TV shows of all time is Castlevania. This was before I even played one of the games. Holy shit, this is good. Um, you know, I, the characters are awesome. The action is fucking great. The music is beautiful. I mean, just listen to Bloody Tears. And I think it's season two, episode seven, um, for love. The Bloody Tears in that. Holy shit, it's beautiful. The action's really great. Um, I really like enjoy the characters. I think they're the best part about the show. The story, it's a lot more mature, but I really like that. It's, like, much more intense, and it's really, really well done. It's, it's fucking amazing. It's my favorite video game movie or TV show. It's fucking beautiful. Check it out. Okay, next up, Mega Man. I didn't even know there was a Mega Man thing. Um, have not seen it. Mega Man looks weird, though, just looking at it. Uh, I think Papa, is it Papa the Rapper? I don't know. Haven't played one of his games. Haven't. I didn't even know the fucking TV show. Another Mega Man thing. I haven't seen it. Silent Hill. I haven't seen it. Pac-Man and the Ghostly Adventures. I have seen that. I did watch that after school in elementary school. It was good. I did enjoy it. I know a lot of people didn't like it, but I, I did. I thought it was good. Um, I like kind of Pac-Man's relationship with the ghost. How it's like the kind of um, like, you know, spying on the inside uh for him and like i like how they gave you like pac-man powers and shit and you know it was just fun to watch it was fun it was just a fun to watch show so yeah next up i just throw ratchet and clank and haven't seen because i have not seen it sonic the hedgehog the movie i'm going to throw this one in good it's probably my favorite sonic thing um i i'm also gonna if, there's no second one here but the second one i can also go in good um it's really good. Um, I, I I was didn't know how I feel went into it. I didn't see it in the theater. I bought it on DVD after it released, but it was really good. Uh, I was not disappointed. Um, Jim Carrey as Eggman is fucking awesome. Um, the action was really good. Um, there's a lot of heart and emotion into it, and uh, it's it's really good. The second one was really cool. How you know they had brought tails and knuckles into it, and they had the big fight at the end. That one was really good too. Okay, so now if I were to rate the new Mario movie, it would go in great. I did really enjoy it. Um, it it's perfect if you're a Mario fan. Like, most of the music in it is from the games, and I really love that. Like, as I was watching it, I'd be like, oh, I know where that, I know where that soundtrack's from, or that uh, music piece is from. Um, the animation is beautiful. Uh, the voice acting is really good. Um, like... You know, a lot of people worry about Chris Pratt as Mario, but I sat down and after about five minutes, like it didn't even register that Chris Pratt was Mario. I'm like, okay, that's just Mario's voice for this movie. Um, Charlie Day's Luigi was my favorite part. I know a lot of people really love Jack Black. Jack Black did an absolutely fantastic job, but my favorite part was Charlie Day as Luigi. I knew as soon as they casted him, he was going to do fantastic. And I was right. I was disappointed that there wasn't as much Luigi, as I was hoping, basically Luigi and Peach switch roles, and that's where I really didn't like it. I'm my least favorite part of the movie was Peach. I was from the get go. I was worried about her. 
I was like, oh god, they're just gonna turn her into a girl boss. And I was right. Pe like, Peach, she can be badass. Peach is badass. But she's also very kind and very sweet. I don't know why they couldn't find a mixture to that. She's just basically a badass girl boss. And it's like, well, she can be badass. Women can be badass. But Peach is also very sweet and very kind in the games. And I don't know why they couldn't find a mixture between Pe Pe Peach being very sweet and very kind, but also very kick-ass. I was very disappointed with Peach, but um, uh, the movie is just great to watch. It's an absolute blast. I, I'm probably going to see it a second time. Um, I wish there were more power-ups in it, but it was very cool to see the power-ups. I also wish they didn't spoil all of them in the trailer. The only one they didn't spoil in the trailer was... I'm not going to spoil it, but there is one power-up they didn't spoil in the trailer. Um, so yeah, um, it was cool seeing Donkey Kong use a power-up, but they did also did spoil that in the trailer. Um, the movie was also pretty funny. Like, I love Donkey Kong and Mario's relationship, how they were kind of just, like, <laughs> rivals. Um, that was great. Um, I think Bowser's performance was really good, like, very true to the games. Like, him being this total badass, but also being a huge simp for Peach. That was also really great. The action scenes were really good. I didn't expect them to go that hard on the action scenes, but they did, and it was great. The movie's just a, a very fun watch, and I would give it a total of about an 8 out of 10. Um, definitely enjoyable. So that is video game, movie, and TV show tier list. Now it's time to move on to Zelda. Now, I haven't played a lot. I've probably played about half of these Zelda games. Um, I want to play more, specifically the DS versions of Zelda, but they're fucking expensive. Like, I go into my local retro game store and they're like a hundred dollars for a ds game i was like holy shit um i also want to play um what the fuck is it called skyward sword uh but i thought i would take a break from zelda for a little bit because i was on a bit of a zelda marathon so i'm gonna take a little break and probably return with skyward sword um so yeah so first of all what is this one is that link to the past no that's link to the past what is that one Four Swords. Okay, I have not played Four Swords. That's the one for the GameCube, right? I think it is. Okay, Link to the Past. It's been a while, but I'm going to put that in great. Link to the Past was very great. I really enjoyed it. It was like the first kind of 2D... And when I say 2D, I mean like old school 8-bit top-down Zelda. Retro Zelda. It was like the first one of those I really played, and I really loved it. The dungeons were really good. I, the music were really good. The bosses were really good. I just really enjoyed it. I wish I could speak more on it, but, like, it has been a while. Next one, um, A Link Between Worlds. That one's awesome. Um, if you're 100%er like I am, that is 100%er's best friend. Oh, my God, that game is so fun. Like, finding all of, like, the mini snails is so fun, and, like, getting... A, all the items. The dungeons are really enjoyable. Uh, except the ice one. I, I, I do hate that one. Uh, but the dungeons are really enjoyable. The bosses are a lot of fun. I really do love the world. Like, how exploring it is very fun. Looking for all the collectibles is really oh, great. And great the fucking camera. There we go. Uh, it's just really fun. 100%ers, best friend. You'll love this game. Breath of the Wild. Have not played... Um. That's probably a big issue for a lot of people. I don't think I'm that interested in playing. It just, it looks very different to Zelda games that I played and enjoyed. The open world thing kind of turns me off. Because I'm like, I kind of like structure in my Zelda game. Like, a structure. And people say, oh, you can go to the main boss right off the bat. Like, the final boss. And I'm like, really? Like, I mean, obviously you shouldn't do that unless you're trying to fucking speed run the game. But it's just like, wow. Like, it would... I'm thinking it would confuse me. It's like, okay, where the fuck am I supposed to go? Where are the dungeons at? Um, it just, it's very big and intimidating. And uh, I should give it a shot, but it, it really scares me. This one, is this one four swords? Because that one says four. Oh, God, what the fuck happened? Okay. Okay. Um, weird. Let's try to fix the camera. There we go. Uh, I don't know what that one is. It looks like four swords, but this one says four swords too. So I don't know. I haven't played that. Link's Awakening. I think I'm going to stick Link's Awakening great. Um, maybe great. Link to the Past is better than it, though. But I did enjoy it. It's going to go in great, because Link to the... Uh, I mean, Link's Awakening DX did have 
good dungeons. Uh, I did have a lot of fun. I was a bit confused at points. But the dungeons and the items were the highlight of the game. I really did enjoy them. Um, and it was kind of cool, like, you know, kind of figuring out the overlapping story. Even though I went into this with it being spoiled that it was all a dream, basically. But it was kind of cool, like, halfway through the end, the bosses are like, please, please don't fucking, you know, wake the windfish. We're all gonna die. Basically just pleading the Link after Link kicks their asses and that. But, um... I have to say, dungeons are really fun in this one. Majora's Mask, if you can read, you know that one's going. Majora's Mask is one of my favorite video games of all time. It's like number four, my fourth favorite video game. So it has to be my favorite Zelda game. It is like the first one I completed. The first one I played was the OG. Um, but Majora's Mask, I love it. I love the atmosphere the overwhelming feeling of the game of dread of the moon falling i love how all the characters are like you know you get to witness how they deal and cope with the incoming death of the moon um the gameplay is really fun the masks make it so much fun with the transformation masks it is also a very fun game 100 percent you know collecting all the masks is really fun to do i love the three-day cycle so you can kind of plan your cycle and be like, okay, this is what I'm going to do in the first day. This is what I'm going to do in the second day. This is what I'm going to do in the third day. Try to cram and get as much done as possible. They really nailed the three-day cycle. How, like, all the NPCs are on a strict schedule. And you can, like, only do stuff in a, a specific point in time. They really nailed that. The dungeons are also really great. Most people's like, oh, there's only four of them. But they're really big and really good. Have you played Stone Tower? That's the best fucking Zelda dungeon I've ever played. Stone Tower is beautiful. The music is also really good. It's Song of Healing, uh, Final Hours, Stone Tower Temple theme. All beautiful music. Majora's Mask is absolutely fantastic. Play it. Play it. Just play it. Uh, next up, which is uh, OG Zelda, um... It's going in good. Uh, I mean, it's all right. I, I gives me kind of Breath of the Wild vibes. How it's like I don't really know what the fuck to do. Um, it was very tedious. I didn't finish it. I think I got like six dungeons in or something like that. Very tedious looking for dungeons and stuff. Like what the fuck to do? I think that's one of the only Zelda games where I gave up and it's like okay, walk through time. Um, the dungeons aren't really anything special. It's usually just fighting monsters and maybe moving a block or something like that. But for the NES, it is very impressive, and it did kick to start the series. So it's not like a bad game; it's just a very confusing NES type game. Um, so yeah, Ocarina of Time. I'm gonna stick that in great. Ocarina of Time. I know that's probably gonna piss off a lot of people. What do you mean, Ocarina of Time? Just great. It's been a while. I'm just gonna put that out. It's been a while. Probably should replay Ocarina of Time. Uh, but it is a good game. I do like the dungeons, especially bottom of the well was really good. Um. There was a lot to it, and I, I, it has really been a while. Um, I remember the items were really fun. I like how they incorporated so many different items in that. Um, I do like the mechanic of like you just starting the game off of, as young Link, and then you go back, to, and then you go to older Link. Um, the bosses were really fun. Uh, the music was really good. Um, I wish I could say more, but it has. It's been like a few years. I re I've only played it once too, so I'm gonna put that on my my need to play list again. I really gotta replay Ocarina of Time. I have not played Oracle of Ages or Seasons. I wish I did, because a lot of people were telling me, oh, these games are awesome, the dungeons are great. It's like, oh, I would get them on my 3DS, um, but, you know, the whole, um, it was, um, was discontinued. So, um, yeah, that was supposed to be funny. Um, I hope you laughed at that part. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Phantom Hourglass have not played, but like I said, I have been wanting to play Phantom Hourglass and Spirit Track, but like, very expensive. Skyward Sword on my on my need to play list. So is Spirit Tracks, but holy shit, Spirit, Spirit Tracks is very expensive. Minish Cap, awesome. I absolutely loved Minish Cap. It was really great. Um. If you have been, like the Nintendo Switch Online expansion pack, gotta play Minish Cap. It was absolutely great. It is amazing to think that was a Game Boy game because the graphics, the pixelated graphics, are really well done. The music is very beautiful. 
very well done. Um, the dungeons are really great, too. Um, you know, like, the items you get in them are really fun. Like, especially, like, I think it's one of the last dungeons where you get, like, the cape and, like, Link can fucking, like, leap. That is such a really cool and really fun mechanic. The shrinking is also really cool and really fun because it, like, a law allows for so many unique puzzles to be solved. And I really did enjoy that. Um, I really like the story. This game also has my favorite Zelda. I just like the whole dynamic between Link and Zelda in this game with them being, like, childhood friends. I really enjoyed that. Um, the game is really fun. I really do like the world. It is very fun to explore and find so many things, like, heart pieces and all that. Um... In the like, what are they fucking called? The, the discs that forge together. The, I don't know. There's like discs that forge together, and then they like a secret uh, is revealed that is somewhere in the map. Those are really fun to fuck around with too. Minish Cap is just overall really good. Wind Waker. I have not played that. That is on my to playlist too. I I do want to get the GameCube version of that because like my Wii U gamepad is a bit fucky. By fucky, I mean it will not turn on at all. Uh, Adventure Link, I have not played, um, no intent to play it, based on how people have showed, like, it just looks, looks different, uh, a lot of people say it's fucking hard and shitty, and I have not really any desire to play it. Twilight Princess is awesome, I just released a Twilight Princess review, if you have not, um, seen that review, um, it's not the best, uh, I did a little bit go on a rant. I'll try to summarize my feelings of Twilight Princess. The game has a huge story, a bigger story than I'm used to, and I'm okay with that. It was, like, a shocking to go into. It really builds itself up, and I love it. I love Minda. Minda's great. Uh, the mechanics are so much fun. The items are really fun, like, especially the double hook shot and the spinner. And, it, and the mechanic of, of Wolf Link is also really fun to use. The dungeons... Oh my god, the dungeons and the bosses are really well done. Like, one of my favorite dungeons is the, um, the mountain dungeon. Like, the snow mountain, like the snow mansion dungeon. That one is really fun. The bosses are so fun in that one, too. And oh my god, um, Twilight Princess is just amazing. It is really good. So, uh, I did not expect this tier list video to be this short. It's like almost, not even half an hour, um... Kind of expecting it to be somewhere in the 40 minute mark, uh, like my other tier list videos, but it's not. Um, so that's just a quick overview of my uh, video game, TV show, and movie tier list. And then we'll go back to the Zelda game tier list. Uh, so yeah, I love these tier list videos. Oh, uh, they're very fun to make. This is the third one. Um... I hope you enjoy making. I mean, I hope you enjoy watching them because I enjoy making them. Um, for next week's Bowser One extra content video, I don't know what I'm going to do. I think it's probably going to be a one-off gaming video. I'm not too sure what the one-off game is that it will be playing, but it's most likely going to be a one-off gaming video. So uh, I look forward to that. Um, anyway, I don't think there's much else I can say. This is a short video. Wow. Um, but anyway. Thank you guys and gals so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And remember, you're all awesome. Bye-bye.